So I'm going to talk through AV and TV modes. Um, AV is aperture value and TV is time value. They both affect the light of your image but in different ways. And time value will let you choose your shutter speed so you can choose how fast the image is being taken. And aperture value you can choose how much light is being let in but you can also aperture also blurs the background as well so we're going to talk through that you'll see how the different modes allow you to take a bit more manual control without going fully manual so the first one we're going to start on is aperture value so I'm just going to move to a place where I can place some objects one behind the other and you can see how it blurs the background you can also see how we set up these modes. So we're going to have a look at how Aperture Value um, helps us blur the background. Now I've got an awesome setup of JD and Diet Coke um, that I'm going to take a picture of and what I'm going to do is show you how Aperture can blur the Jack Daniels boxes in the background compared to the Diet Coke in the foreground. So the thing to remember when you're using these aperture value and time value modes you can change the ISO and you can also change the white balance still so remember that so the white balance is currently set on the wrong thing it's daylight affecting the image so I've just picked that for my white balance and I also don't need an ISO that high so I'm just going to change the ISO maybe to 400 because there's a lot of light affecting the image so what the camera will do for me is it will pick the shutter speed the easiest way I think to remember the shutter speed numbers a low shutter speed number means that less light is being blocked out so more light is reaching the image so if you imagine if you just look forward open your eyes really wide it's quite hard to focus on the background that's because a lot of light is entering your eyes alternatively if you look at something and then squint you can focus on it a lot more it's exactly what is happening with the camera so if you imagine there's less eyelid covering your eye there you go, there's less number aperture that you're using so if you imagine that you're on a lower number there's more blur in the background because it can't focus because there's a lot of light coming in if you're on a higher number there's more light being blocked out you can concentrate more and therefore you're getting the background in focus I hope that helps <laughs> So. We're on a low number, which means there's less light being blocked out. So that means the light should flood the foreground, and those Jack Daniels bottles should be blurred in the background. So if we take that picture, you should see if we zoom in that there's a fair, fair it actually looks really sharp on, on the camera. There's a fair bit of blur on the Jack Daniels bottles behind. If we then go for a higher aperture number, you've got to remember now it's blocking out more light, which means that we have to have a higher ISO. When we press down this shutter here, halfway, it will show us what shutter speed it's decided to use. So that's really handy to know that we've got a shutter speed that we can do handheld because it's a faster shutter speed. So when you compare the two pictures you'll see that the, the text on the Jack Daniels bottles is more blurred in the original picture in the one with the lower aperture because there's more light flood in the foreground, background is blurred. It is a lot more noticeable with SLR cameras, unfortunately it doesn't show up as well on bridge cameras and compact cameras but it does do it. So just bear that in mind when using aperture value if you want to particularly blur a background. Remember also that the the Jack Daniels bottles are quite close to the can in terms of blur. Obviously it can't blur too much because they're still right there. What I'm going to do now is just take a couple of pictures with it further back so you can see that the, the blur does get more extreme. So if you've got a person in the foreground and you want to blur the background, like a garden or something, you'll notice it more. So I've just done those demo pictures there. The last thing I want to mention on aperture value, and this um, counts for time value as well, is that if you pick settings that 
it can't pick a decent shutter speed for, it will show that shutter speed up in orange. Now you can use the auto ISO if you want to, you know, that will help you to a certain amount just to judge the amount of light that's coming in your image. It's always good to try and do your ISO yourself because then you're on your way to fully manual usage so you, you, you have more control over your image but you can use auto ISO if you want to, uh, that's entirely your choice. Okay, so now we're going to go through time value. So, time value, quite like when you're using aperture, but this way around, you're picking your shutter speed and it will pick the rest for you. I've left the ISO on auto this time just so that you can see that it does work. So, if you want to capture a fast moving object, all I've got is a car, sorry, um, you can zoom in. See, the ones going that way are going a bit slower, so we'll try and go for ones that are going from right to left. So what you can do is you can tell it that you need to have a really fast shutter speed because you want to capture something quickly. So if we half press the button you'll see that it's picked F4 which is fine. It's just picking the aperture that's appropriate for the light. So what we can do is when I see a car coming I'm just going to press down the shutter fully. So I've got it half pressed and ready to go. Here it comes. And again so if we've got a lot of items moving past fast, we can take pictures quickly. I don't have my camera reviewing pictures, I have to press the playback button to review my images. There's no, there's no blur or anything like that, the pictures are coming out well. If I tried to do the same thing in aperture value, just to demo it, you'll see there's there's blur lines on the car and that's because it's not trying to prioritize your shutter speed to go quickly it's trying to prioritize your at the aperture that you've told it to use so on time value the first thing it's thinking about is maintaining the shutter speed that you've told it to so obviously you want that picture to go quicker so it's going to choose the appropriate aperture and remember i use the auto iso just to demo that it does work and as you can see it does so i hope that explains those settings for you the last thing I wanted to say quickly, um, you, you'll probably recall that I was saying earlier about the exercise where you open your eyes and you'll notice that you can't focus on the background as easily as if you squint them. I actually wrote that into a uh, like paper based tutorial in case people wanted to print it out. If that's something that people are interested in, I'll um, try and upload a link to my blog or try and upload it somewhere. If, uh, if people are interested, if they're not and they think I ramble a load of rubbish, I won't bother doing them but you know if people just want a talk through aperture or a talk through light writing or something that you can print out or have on your screen and read through step by step if if that's something people are interested in then I'll put it online somewhere I've only done aperture for now just to show the sort of thing that I would do but yeah let me know if that's of any interest to anyone